my advanced friends that like don't have channels they are all like dude the coaches on youtube it's it's like insane they're like have you noticed all their girls are ugly i'm like yeah they're like have you noticed they haven't shown any proof of any kind of results yeah have you noticed all their technical game explanations are completely wrong yes <laughs> i've made hundreds of videos on it no you don't and that's a terrible mindset I was talking about yesterday how the purpose of the interaction is not to win over the girl. It's not to gain points. It's not to avoid making mistakes. It's not to say or do the perfect things or avoid doing the wrong things. You should just assume you got the girl before you go in. Don't fucking tiptoe. That, that is a mistake right there. If you're like trying to not make mistakes, you're already fucked. Don't care about making mistakes and don't care about what she thinks of you. This is where having an optimized strategy and, and getting your mindset dialed in comes in. Because then you don't need to be like, oh, what do I do next? You know everything to do. You don't need to be like, oh, do I have enough value? You know you have enough value. We've already solved that in advance. Sun Tzu says in the book, The Art of War, the battle is won before it's fought. When I dial in your mindset properly, when I give you the optimal moves and you know exactly what to do and say, it becomes easy mode. A lot of guys are like, it feels like I have the cheat codes. This feels too easy. That's how it's supposed to be. Okay, Most guys are clueless and they're afraid of fucking it up because they don't know what they should be doing and saying. And so they're often fucking it up. I greatly prefer night game. Always have. There's pros and cons, right? Like you can meet. I've met some really awesome types of girls from day game that never go to bars and clubs. Had I not approached them during the day, I would have never met them. There's also girls in day game that aren't on the online apps too. Sometimes it's good to mix all of them. Yeah, I have a million of these. I, some of the favorite stuff, one of my last like steady corporate jobs was at in Vegas. When I first moved to Vegas, I only lasted like a couple months there, but I would literally be on like one to two hours of sleep sometimes. I'd have to sleep in my car at lunch. I would be in meetings and people would be like addressing me personally. Like imagine you're in a meeting, there's like six or seven people in the room. You're in a corporate environment. They're paying me like 130K or something like that. And people would be talking to me, looking at me in the eye and my eyes would involuntarily close. So like, imagine you're speaking to me like blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I would pass out. This kind of shit maybe happened to guys like in high school or, or college or whatever. Like, you know, when you have, if you maybe had an early class in college, you're like dozing off. And, you know, some of you might know what I'm talking about here. Like your dreams start like mixing with reality where it's like something's like happening in a dream, but you're also like partially listening to the person. Like the sound gets like louder, like your subjective sensory perception of sound gets like a bit louder and you, you're, you like come to full consciousness and you're like, oh my God. And you're like, partially confused yeah i was like going through cycles of that constantly when i was like on no sleep from from doing night game all the time but yeah i mean like i don't know what they thought when <laughs> they're speaking to someone who'd fall asleep i also would just like like at lockheed i made alliances like in the missile defense program i made an alliance with like the deputy director of the missile defense program we'd like go in and shoot the shit i'd talk about like banging hot chicks to him and like all this stuff and he's like i like you and i basically just like won him over he gave me like full reign he's like i want you to like pick a team and i have like some special projects he's like i want you to lead this team so i had like immunity from like my boss and my boss's boss and shit like that where i just would like skip all these meetings come in super late all the time like it gave me like license to like dick off a shit ton in a corporate setting which was awesome and i also would use vacation time weekly just so i didn't have to work full 40 hours because they gave you like three weeks vacation a year yeah he let me get all this extra equipment my boss would like call me in he'd be like john um i noticed you're not uh, attending a lot of the important meetings i'm like oh those are kind of a waste of time you know it's mostly people just like trying to brag about what they're working on and this and that doesn't apply to me and prefer to get more work done in my desk it's a bullshit. and he's like well i don't know i don't I think we're gonna have to explore this further and maybe uh, have a, a disciplinary i'm like oh okay would you like to talk to tim and like Tim's like the deputy director guy. He's like, oh, no, no, no. Like, uh, you know, carry on. <laughs> Basically, he just like formed alliances and then like use that as leverage to like do like less than the bare minimum. But I was like winning awards and shit. Like in the corporate world, like you just have to do the bare minimum to get by. And it's important to like, like when I first started working at Lockheed, I like worked hard, right? And so like, they're like, wow, this guy's amazing. And then whenever I had an opportunity to shine, I would. But then the rest of the time, I did, you know, as little as possible. I did a lot of my like health research and, and neuroscience research, like on the clock on the, in, the, in those corporate jobs. Because 40 hours, like, I mean, ask yourself this, like, how many of you are actually working 40 hours? It's funny, like in the movie Office Space, he's like, yeah, I, I come in, sit at my desk and just kind of like zone out for an hour. And there's like the bobs or whatever. They're like interviewing, like see who, who's expendable at the company. And they're like, what do you mean by zone out? He's like, I just basically like kick back and like think about nothing. And they're like, okay, interesting. <laughs> He's like, then I like check emails and like zone out another hour before I go to lunch. And they're like, okay. 
And he basically is like saying like he doesn't give a fuck and like does next to nothing. And they like promote him and like fire the other guys that are working hard. I could really relate to that because <laughs> uh, what I found, this is my own anecdotal experience in the corporate world, is they would like demand more of the people that were like busting their ass. So there were guys that were like working as hard as they could at all times. And those guys would like get assigned way more shit. It's like, oh, this is a workhorse. Like, let's fucking load them up. And, and that just makes your life hell, right? Whereas like if you set a precedent that, <laughs> that like you're somewhat unreliable, that actually can work in your favor if done correctly. Enough about that. I will link in the description our testimonial page, our proof page, which has over a thousand testimonials on it. We have stories of virgins joining my week program, sleeping with eight girls in eight weeks, guys breaking multi-year dry spells, guys getting their first threesomes, guys landing a stunner girlfriend, guys building big rotations very quickly. I have the best quantity and quality of testimonials in the industry, hands down. Get rid of this idea. Like, look, look at the trouble Andrew Tate got into. All this, like, I'm going to be a digital pimp. I'm going to read uh, Pimp and Ken's, you know, rules or whatever, like these old school pimp books. Okay. And then you can get in trouble for human trafficking and coercion and fraud and all this stuff. Don't try to learn the pimp game. You're not fucking Project Pat. <laughs> Here's a song called Gorilla Pimp. That's Juicy J's brother. Where they're always like, bitch, you better have my money. Like, this isn't a fucking movie. I know it sounds cool, but don't try to learn the pimp game. Do the virgins ever pussy out on the clothes? You know, there's some special circumstances sometimes, right? Where it's like overwhelming. <laughs> I've been aware of Sartain for a long time. Before he was butt buddies with Rolo. I did the math on this. Rolo hasn't, hasn't banged new chick in over 25 years. Which means he hasn't banged a chick since cell phones being popular. So he hasn't banged chicks via any kind of number closing and text messaging. He hasn't banged chicks using online apps. <laughs> he hasn't even banged a chick since before Y2K. Think about that. Oh, definitely not. I love making fun of these guys. Like, like it's awesome teaching optimized strategy. But if like, let's say like this was like pickup college or something, and like I only had the job of teaching strategy. Like I love that part, but it makes it like ten times more fun that the the industry, the manosphere, the community, whatever is filled with like jokers filled with like complete retards like imagine you had in any industry really right like imagine in the ufc most of the people in the ufc like had no idea how to throw a punch and they had no record of fighting that's why the self-help industry is fucked right in, in any other industry where you don't need to show direct empirical proof if anybody came in the ufc and is like oh i'm so good at fighting and everyone's like where's your record where's your tapes of fighting and they're like oh i don't, I don't have that but you know i'm really good i'm really good i've won i've won most fights and and, and then they're like, okay, demonstrate it for us. And, and they like can't throw a basic punch, for instance. They wouldn't last a day. They're going to be laughed, laughed out of the industry. Here, we, I could literally, like I've wanted to do this. I could literally go grab like 20 virgins, give them webcams and professional video editors and be like, just say you're good with girls. And the fact that they have no pictures with hot girls and no infield and no testimonials doesn't matter to most people. All they have to do is is get views and and you know pretend like they know what they're talking about. That's like the only fucking bare minimum base requirements in this industry. The fact that I get to call them all out is extremely entertaining for me as well. I think they deserve to be checked. Nobody else is checking them. Like like nobody nobody even realizes their shit's so bad. Like most people don't realize. I mean my friend my advanced friends that like don't have channels, they are like, dude, the coaches on YouTube it's it's like insane. They're like, have you noticed all their girls are ugly? I'm like, yeah. They're like, have you noticed they haven't shown any proof of any kind of results? Yeah. Have you noticed all their technical game explanations are completely wrong? Yes. <laughs> I've made hundreds of videos on it. But yeah, it, it is definitely a very fun part of the job. Jives with my sense of humor too, especially making fun of how cringe these guys are. I will link in the description our testimonial page, our proof page, which has over a thousand testimonials on it. We have stories of virgins joining my week program, sleeping with eight girls in eight weeks, guys breaking multi-year dry spells, guys getting their first threesomes, guys landing a stunner girlfriend, guys building big rotations very quickly. I have the best quantity and quality of testimonials in the industry, hands down.